this is the start of a new project. I will be getting back onto the CNC uh, plasma cutting table as soon as I can. Got a few other uh, projects to get out of the way first, as ever, uh, other things getting in the way of completing these projects. But I will get back onto them at some point, so thanks for anyone that's uh, waiting around for those. Um, but I want to try and get this one sorted out um, before I get on to the other ones. Uh, this doesn't belong to me, this is actually a controller of the Herco uh, BMC 25 mil. So it's a CNC mill, uh, quite a big uh, unit, uh, something like this. And you'll notice there are two displays on the mill. Now, if you've watched my videos for a while, you may have seen some uh, videos I posted quite a while ago now on the repair of a CNC controller. And all these controllers and systems work in a fairly similar way. They look very different, different implementations, but essentially they are all the same. Even uh, things like Mac 3 based systems uh, work in a similar way. And what you have is a central core processor. So that's what this is. And um, at the moment it doesn't work. I'll get onto this in a minute. Um, but you have the core processor you then have the controllers that uh, physically uh, control the hardware and uh, then you have some type of interface so people can actually uh, use the machine and in its simplest form that's all you need but the uh, difficulty comes when you try and uh, perform complex CNC tasks so if we take a simple example such as cutting a circle um, if you don't have any intelligence built into your controller then your CNC code will have to effectively calculate every single step in order to cut the circle and move the uh, tool in the right way. But if you get a smarter controller, you might find that you can uh, tell it to cut an arc and then you just specify what arc you want to cut. Um, and then you get something more intelligent still that might just be a circle uh, can cycle. So you just tell it to cut a circle in a certain position at a certain diameter. And that intelligence level depends on the particular implementation that you have. So you have your central processor, you'll have your hardware controller, and then sitting between them there'll be some sort of intelligence. And in something like the Herco, they call it a personality board. In Mac 3, it's a personality file. Uh, but they all work in a similar way. They take the instructions coming from the controller, they intercept them, interpret them and then they will perform wherever action has been decoded and they will pass that on to the control boards. And the two displays that you saw in the image for this machine, in fact I don't think it's this machine but it's a similar machine, the two displays are actually two um, what you could really look at as dumb terminals. Uh, so they're not like a typical display you'd get on a PC, uh, they are controlled through a couple of serial ports and that's very similar to the way that the CNC controller that I showed uh, being repaired a while ago works. You have the central processor, you have a personality board, controller boards, interface boards, memory boards, that sort of thing. And the two terminals that it had, one was for display and the other was for control. So the terminals can be bi-directional of course and contain things like keyboards lights, displays, CRTs, that sort of thing. And they allow two-way communication between the operator and the machine. And in between those terminals and the controller and the control circuits is the personality board. Now on a machine like this it's quite complex. You have the controller which is what this larger board is here. So this is a 486 based uh, controller and it's uh, the machine also has a personality board but data goes from this um, board through to the personality board to the terminals and also to the control circuits and in order for this machine to work it has to load an operating system there is some um, firmware in this of course to drive the system but the main operating system the main brains of the system is loaded from hard disk when you power it up so this machine has a hard disk, it has a floppy disk, it operates a bit like a mini uh, PC. You have uh, other boards that sit on here and they all perform various functions to allow the overall system to operate. 
The problem with this is it won't boot up. Now the this isn't mine, it doesn't belong to me, it's been sent to me for repair, it's a bit more modern than the, the devices I normally work on. Um, but I would like this, uh, if possible, to be a collaboration between all of us, if possible. I have almost no information on this whatsoever. The owner has contacted the manufacturer and they're not interested in trying to help. It's not a particularly old machine, it's only 1993. All right, for some of you that might seem like a very long time ago, but for us old uh, is it's uh, fairly recent. Um, but the manufacturer is just not interested in trying to help, which is fairly surprising considering the cost of these things. Uh, there are various uh, people, or at least one person, that um, said they might be able to repair this, but um, the cost would be very high, and there's no real guarantee that they could uh, repair this anyway. Uh, so if you have any information whatsoever on one of these, as I said, it's a Herco BMC uh, 25. This is the controller from it. There are various different uh, controllers that were used. And we'll look at this in more detail and exactly what this particular controller is as we go through these videos. But if you have any information whatsoever, then uh, please contact me and uh, you may be able to help getting this uh, back up and running again. Now the main um, culprit that we believe is stopping this thing from booting up essentially when he tries to power it up I haven't seen the machine I've only got these boards but when he tries to power it up um, the terminals don't come to life and there's no sign that the machine is actually trying to boot and the disk gets a, a cursor on the display the CRT display of the terminal uh, which is what you would get if there's no data coming through from the main controller uh, the main uh, culprit, we believe, is possibly this Dallas battery-backed uh, RAM chip. And like a small PC, this most likely contains the parameters required to allow this unit to communicate with the hard disk and hence load the operating system. If that data has been lost, then of course that's not going to work because the uh, computer is not going to be able to communicate with the hard disk. I haven't tried powering this up, I have done nothing at all with this so far, you're going to see exactly what I'm seeing. And uh, normally with a, a PC this is not a huge problem, what you can do is just uh, unsolder the uh, battery back RAM chip, put a new one in, or hopefully a new one, and um, you can then boot into the BIOS for the system, reconfigure it and away you go. Now unfortunately it's not that simple with a machine like this because the only displays are the remote terminals and of course the only way you can communicate with the remote terminal is when the system's up and running. You obviously need the system running to uh, be able to send data and retrieve data from the terminals. You can't do that with this machine if it's not booting, hence uh, the configuration for the machine can't be done uh, with this board in the uh, the host machine. Now from the information we have been able to glean off the internet and correct me if I'm wrong and if you do have information on this then uh, please contact me. Um, what I've been able to find and what the owner's been able to find so far is that in order to enter the configuration with this you have to attach um, an external keyboard directly to the board and then you have to connect a VGA interface directly to the board. The um, system will then in theory allow you to boot into the BIOS in the same way that you can with a PC. The problem is we don't know what the interface is for the VGA and that's what we're going to be trying to figure out as we go through these videos. Whether or not there is VGA output direct from this board or if there are control signals and you require a daughter board to uh, create the VGA uh, interface. Got no idea. If you know, then again, please contact me. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do with this is to take out the uh, Dallas uh, battery backed RAM chip. I'm actually going to fit a socket um, in its place so that I can remove and refit this um, if I need to. Uh, I'll be careful when I take it out. The first thing I want to do once I've got it out is read the contents and take an image so that if, it's, if the problem's not this, then at least I can restore it if we can find out what the actual problem is. And also, um, if we can get this working, I'll take an image of the working um, contents 
and then that will be available for anyone that may encounter the same problem. If this board's packed up this way, pretty much guarantee that um, any that are still running will follow suit fairly quickly. Uh, so the only issue in putting a socket here is this board sits in this location and there's only a very small gap between the top of the Dallas chip and the underside of this board. So I've had to get hold of a very low profile socket that I'll be putting into this location, um, get the, uh, this old device out, read the contents and then try fitting the new one. Now the owner has also sent me the motherboard that this plugs into, the floppy disk, standard floppy disk, I think any uh, three and a half inch uh, drive would do for that, and he's also sent me the hard disk. So um, I need to figure out all the connections, get um, this sorted out, but before we get onto that I need to get the battery back RAM chip changed. So I'll be doing that uh, for the next video. I'm not going to video uh, changing it, it'll be fairly tedious. I need to be very careful, I get one chance at doing this. I don't want to destroy the board. And um, as I said, if you have any information whatsoever on this, then uh, please leave a comment and uh, see if you can help get this uh, machine up and running.